Hey everyone, this video is more like a follow-up video to my previous video, which is My Hero Academia Movie 3's Animation Analysis. If you haven't watched that movie, I highly recommend you to watch it because it's absolutely beautiful. It's visually stunning. It blows past movie 1 and 2, though movie 1 is not that good in the first place, so it's not much of a competition. But movie 2 was very good. And movie 2 does not even compare to this. That's how good this looks. And even if you don't care at all about animation, then you're probably an army, in which case you'll still enjoy the movie because the plot is just basic shonen, but it's still a fun plot. I like the plot more than movie 2's plot. And yeah, it's just a really fun experience. And if you are in fact an army and you've watched the movie, you can watch my animation analysis of the movie and maybe I'll be able to show you what's so amazing about 2D animation. In that video, I talk about one scene that stood out to me as the best animated scene I've ever seen in anime. And yes, that is not an exaggeration. This is truly the best animated scene I've ever seen in anime. Quite possibly also the best animated scene I've seen in animation ever. Like if you're talking about animation as a whole, you also have to consider Western shows, right? And I think this beats all of it. Like any piece of animation ever does not compare to how good this looks. The scene I'm talking about was animated by Norimitsu Suzuki. Norimitsu Suzuki is a star animator. He's a veteran animator, been around for a super long time. This is him animating in 2001 in Cowboy Bebop's movie, and he was already super good. Similar to Yutaka Nakamura, Norimitsu Suzuki is like a master of all trades. There's nothing he cannot do. He is very good at foreground animation. He has an amazing understanding of human anatomy. He's also incredible with effects animation. This is one of the best animated effects I've ever seen. The fucking smoke, the explosion looks absolutely stunning. And then there is background animation. In my video where I talk about Studio Portable and Demon Slayer, I say how generally people don't care much about background animation or effects animation, if it's done digitally, that is. But background animation is one thing that looks absolutely mind-blowing if done by hand. There is so much work and talent that goes into it that it just cannot be replicated by using 3D backgrounds, no matter how good the 3D backgrounds look. The patience, the imaginative power, and the depth of awareness that goes into making 2D background animation is like nothing else. So one of the purposes of using background animation is to create rotation shots, which Norimitsu Suzuki absolutely excels at. Norimitsu Suzuki in today's industry just works uncredited most of the time. I don't know why he does it, but there are big name animators who are not part of studios. They are freelancers, but they still go uncredited for episodes. Norimitsu Suzuki does have a very particular niche of solo key animation in endings. He makes amazing endings. He storyboards them himself, I think. Norimitsu Suzuki's last solo key animation work was in an anime that aired pretty recently. It's called Godzilla Singular Point. It's a Studio Bones project. Norimitsu Suzuki just works with Studio Bones more often than he works with other studios. And in that ED for this scene, we can see what Norimitsu Suzuki is so good at. This amazing fluid rotation shots. You can think of the amount of imaginative power and effort that goes into this, right? Like the girl who's in the foreground, we get a 360 view of her. And we also get a 360 view of the room she's in that creates an illusion of depth. It is not actual depth, but the illusion of depth. Because everything here is 2D, everything here is flat. The girl in the foreground is flat. The background is also flat. The distance between them is zero because they're just literal 2D panels layered on top of each other. So the way the illusion of 2D is given, that's just because of the way Norimitsu Suzuki is playing with perspectives. This is what I mean when I say he has an incredible level of depth awareness. This is depth awareness. And I'm sure most of you watching have been impressed by Norimitsu Suzuki's cuts in the past. Death Note. I'm sure you watched Death Note. And while watching Death Note, I'm sure there's a scene in the ED that intrigued you, that looked special. The beautiful rotational shot where Light tosses the apple up to Ryuk. It's amazing no matter how many times you see it. It's the kind of animation that when you watch it for the first time, you immediately pause it, you rewind it and watch it again because you feel something special coming from it. And that's what Norimitsu Suzuki scenes are like. Another example of this insane depth awareness I'm saying is in Eureka 7, where again, he animated an ending all by himself. Eureka 7's ending looks absolutely incredible. It just looks like 3D computer imagery. It looks like 2.5D animation. It's so fluid and eerily real that it's hard to believe that Norimitsu Suzuki is creating all of these by just putting pen on paper. 
Well, maybe Norimi Suzuki is not making this by putting pen on paper. Maybe he's a superior being that's capable of interdimensional travel. He's moving from our universe to the 2D anime universe and is actually shooting this with the 2D camera. It really does look insane, doesn't it? Do you know what's actually insane? That this was made in 2005. Imagine an animator who's this good in 2005, working today, 17 years later, in a movie where he has complete creative control. What would the scene look like? Yutaka Nakamura, the greatest action animator ever, he tweeted saying he was intimidated after seeing the huge stack of papers that Norimi Suzuki had animated for this movie. He did not mention who the animator was, so some people thought it was Suzuki, some people thought it was Hayashi, but once you watch this movie, yeah, you can tell. Oh, that, that's the stack that Yutaka Nakamura was talking about. That insane stack is for one minute of animation. And this one minute of animation is a consistent cut, which is just so insanely special, it's so insanely mind-blowing. I'm just gonna get into the breakdown now. Every time I watch it, it somehow becomes more impressive than last time. Every time I'm like, okay, maybe saying that this is the best animated scene in animation history is a bit of a stretch. Maybe there's something better out there. I just watched this again and I realized that, yeah, this is the best animated scene in animation history. Immediately, right off the bat, we get some incredible background animation and the way Todoroki's eyes is popping up here, it just gives the same vibes as those oddly satisfying videos. The timing is so beautiful, it's so satisfying. We then get a dope as rotation shot where the eyes envelops the bad guy and notice how the background here has a bunch of thick lines and a bunch of geometrical shapes. These cubic blocky designs for the backgrounds, they act as markers for Norimi Suzuki. Since he's going to be animating this frame by frame, it is going to be insanely difficult to keep them consistent for every single frame. He needs to make it look such that the background is moving and not like the background is changing to a different shape for every single frame. So what he's doing here is breaking down a humongous background into a humongous background that is comprised of smaller units which he can keep track of and it will be easier to animate it frame by frame since the shape is always consistent. You only need to animate it from a different perspective each time, which is easier said than done, but it is easier than if the background was just a fucking mess of rubble. We then zoom out and whoosh to the ground where the eyes captures Rudy and Rudy does a break dancing segment and then he's brought back up to Midoriya. Here you can see some of that spatial awareness that I talked about with Norimi Suzuki. Try to imagine the area where the scene is being shot. Of course, there is no camera here, it's not a real place, but the artist is trying to create the scene. So there's this cliff and that's where Rodi is falling. The bad guy is on the same level, Deku is also at that level. There's a higher stage and that's where Todoroki is standing. So Todoroki uses eyes that came like this, turned grabbed the guy who's at the base level, then moved up, then went down, grabbed Rodi and came up now to Midoriya's level and it's always consistent. When it comes, you can see that the eyes over Midoriya's head goes back to Todoroki who's on the top floor. And this space that he's constructed, it remains consistent throughout this 58 second long cut. Now Todoroki has some dialogue to try and make the movie sound canon. Ain't no way this movie is canon. The main My Hero Academia series is not even 10% as epic as this movie is. Anyway, I'm thinking about the director's choice here, how he gave instructions to Suzuki. So you do the insane Sakuga, but then we need three seconds of Todoroki's mouth flapping, and then you can resume with the insane Sakuga. And resume with insane Sakuga, he does immediately with an awesome rotation shot with again the crazy background animation here you can see that some of the background is shaded differently to depict a slant because they are at different levels here if you look at this frame in particular you can tell that the spatial consistency is still there in the top right over here is where the captured bad guy is and the ice is going up the ice is going down explosion awesome debris and smoke animation and yes your eyes aren't deceiving you 
that is a rotational shot of a hand-drawn helicopter. Norimitsu Suzuki drew a helicopter frame by frame from all directions and he does it multiple times. So we get a look at Arrow here, again another rotation shot. This is with Bakugo coming in. I really like this segment. Are you ready for it? Wow. Okay, so a bunch of stuff to talk about here. Bakugo attacks the helicopter, then there's a rotation shot, and then everything zooms out. The smoke that you see over there is the explosion from earlier. It is still there. Todoroki is now riding the ice slide that he created earlier, and now he's on top of that guy who he froze at the first section of this cut. Yeah, it's, just, it's one cut. It's still one cut. So the, while the idea already is impressive, the animations also keeps up. Todoroki's fabric animation here is beautiful. And so is Bakugo's. And so is the Arrow Girls. Really, I, I actually just forgot to talk about fabric animation, I guess. But yeah, the fabric animation is amazing. It looks fluid. It looks super realistic. Look at it flapping in the wind. It's so cool. That's when Arrow attacks them. And Suzuki just chooses to put in the goofiest fucking face here for no reason. And then we have another rotational shot with a foreground model, which is exploding. So there's falling debris and background animation. So while everything is rotating, the debris that's exploded is also falling. How do you come up with this? And even if you do come up with this, how the hell do you animate something like this? Of course, he animated that rotation shot in ones, by the way. Animation in ones means animating in 24 FPS. It's not really animating in 24 FPS, it just means holding a drawing for one frame. So every single frame you're skipping will be a unique drawing. So if it's animation at 48 FPS, then 48 FPS would be ones. If it's animation at 24 FPS, which is the standard, 24 FPS is considered ones. Usually most action scenes are animated in twos, which means one drawing will be held for two frames. Now just because someone animates in ones does not mean they're animation is superior. It's not about numbers. It's not about frame rate. It's not about just having a higher number of drawings. It's about how you use them. It's a topic that's pretty interesting. So I will make a whole video about that. And now we get another insane piece of background animation. Notice how he's adding background smears. You don't add smears on top of background animation. But since these are background models that he's animating himself, he's adding speed lines on top of it to depict motion. I just thought it was pretty cool. The spatial consistency, of course, is still there, though this explosion, it breaks the ice that went up and then down to catch Rody. Yeah, those two ice pillars are no longer there. But the initial slide is still there, and the helicopter comes from underneath that ice slide. That's the ballsy move by the pilot. Another incredible rotational shot, a zoom in an arrow's face. She's kind of pissed at the traitor. I don't know how she saw or heard that that guy is betraying her. Anyway, arrow zooms out, so does the helicopter that is still drawn by hand. Have I mentioned that? Have I mentioned that every single component of this whole segment animated by Norimi Suzuki is animated only by Norimi Suzuki? It's entirely hand drawn by him. There is no CGI components to this. I, I think I might have mentioned it before a couple of times. I'm just that impressed by it. We are, get, now get a zoom in on Todoroki who's now telling Bakugo what to do, and Bakugo tells Todoroki not to tell him what to do, but still does exactly what Todoroki tells him, which is doing some badass fucking shit. We get another rotation shot here. Zoom in on the helicopter, zoom in on Arrow, and then we go into first person view with Arrow. This is some of the most imaginative storyboarding I've ever seen in general. Of course, just having first person storyboarding is not all that special, but going from ground level, to following Bakugo and then rotating out and following Arrow and then going to first person with Arrow. That is imaginative. Arrow shoots a bunch of arrows. The animation technique that Norimitsu Suzuki is using here is called Iteno Circus. It's an extremely popular technique. It's when one character is being followed by something, is being attacked, in this case a hail of rockets, but it could also be used in like a dog fight when you're following a plane and it's being chased by a bunch of missiles. So whatever the character is that is being chased, it's always kept in frame. You never lose track of it. 
Here, Bakugo is always in frame as all of the objects are tracking him. Now imagine the alternative to this. Imagine Bakugo is here and a bunch of missiles are chasing him. You have to depict movement. So do you do a sh shot where Bakugo goes whoosh, missiles follow him, you cut it, you show it from a different angle, missiles follow him, you cut it again. Not as visually impressive as just doing it in one single cut, which is kind of what Noru Mitsuzuki is doing here with the entire scene, so just might as well throw in Itena Circus anyway. But Itena Circus is really super popular. The technique has basically become the only way to do aerial combat because it's just perfection. Of course, there are other ways to do aerial combat, but this has to be part of it because it's it's great. Why would you not have Itena Circus in it? And it's not even just limited to anime. If you've played Genshin Impact, which you probably have, the first cutscene, it's a very good example of Itena Circus because Genshin Impact animators as Miharyo, they, are, they very much take inspiration from anime. You even see 2D impact frames in Genshin Impact, but seeing the Itena Circus technique being used was certainly a surprise and it it looked great, even with CGI models. And then Bakugo shoots himself forward, goes from the back of the helicopter to the front of it. And that just looks so fucking cool, doesn't it? The helicopter is a foreground model, it's not a background. And Bakugo is also a foreground model. And it's really pleasing to the eye to see how Bakugo is interacting with the helicopter, almost using the helicopter as a background model. It reminds me of the scene in Attack on Titan Season 1 animated by Arifumi Imai where Levi is going up the female titan's arm and we follow Levi as he does so and also in Levi vs Beast Titan where the camera where the camera is following Levi as he goes down the Beast Titan's body and the Beast Titan is just used as a background model. Kind of the same thing going on here but it's a fucking helicopter. Not saying that titans are easy to draw, of course not. That took Arifumi Imai 4 months to create. I can only imagine how fucking long this took Norimitsu Suzuki to create. Baku gets to the front of the helicopter and then we zoom back in on Arrow who's reaching for arrows and but she just doesn't have anything left. This is just a frame where you show a character realizing something and it is shown in the form of character acting. You see Arrow's expression change but not only that it is way more animated than just that. We still see fabric animation, we still see hair animation. There's always movement in this whole cut and there's a cut. Cuts to Bakugo holding onto the helicopter in a very goofy way. Then we have the scene where Arrow just gives up and jumps off the helicopter. Now even here, you could get away if you just use an illustration for the helicopter. But no, Norimitsu Suzuki has to go the extra mile of animating the helicopter interiors frame by frame. And then the helicopter crashes. Oh my god, those are Utapon cubes. No, all cubic debris are not Utapon cubes. Another video idea. Yeah, I guess I'll make a video on animation terminologies like Itano Circus, Utapon Cubes, Ebata Walk, etc. Be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss it when it comes out. Anyway, yeah, these are cubic debris, but they don't have the pop timing, which is very specific in Yuta Kanakamura's animation. And this has to be the most realistic helicopter crash scene I've seen in anime. The lightning effect just before it blows up is really cool. The smoke effect is really cool and the ripple that is forming as the helicopter is about to explode also looks amazing. The explosion itself, of course, fucking incredible. I've, I already showed you an example from My Hero Academia where Nori Mitsuzuki animated incredible explosions. He's amazing at 2D effects animation. Who could have guessed? A man who is so incredible at everything is also good at effects animation. And that's it. That's the whole scene. It is the most incredible piece of animation I have ever seen in my life. And I don't think that'll be changing ever. Like, I don't see how anyone is beating that. I just don't see it. Unless it's Nori Mitsuzuki himself just doing some crazy shit for maybe season 6 of My Hero Academia. Or maybe in the next My Hero Academia movie, whatever it is. But this is why I've always been pro My Hero Academia movie. Because, yeah, you're not getting that in the TV show. Nori Mitsuzuki himself animated in the TV show. And it looked fucking incredible. But it's nothing to this extent. Because this entire scene just looks like it was made up. For Nori Mitsuzuki to flex his animation skills. You can't do that for the anime unless you're creating extra scenes like, like Demon Slayer does. They extend their fight scenes. But that doesn't mean that Demon Slayer skips all the corny dialogue. They still keep all the corny dialogue. That just means that if you're following your source material, you're still limited. Like even with One Punch Man Season 1, the staff was limited by what they could do. They were limited to Murata's artwork in the manga which just so happens to be the greatest action manga ever. Like Murata literally animates his pages in the manga. 
My Hero Academia's manga is also amazing, but the action really doesn't compare to One Punch Man's manga's action. When season 4 aired, I, I saw a bunch of people complaining how they ruined Deku vs. Gentle Criminal in the anime. And in the manga, it was very well thought out, very well storyboarded, and very well drawn. And then I checked it out and compared it, and it's, it's just one-to-one. -one. The anime didn't change anything. In fact, the anime just took the manga and made it better. It didn't really ruin the fight at all. But that really is, that's just how it goes when you're following a manga. So if you want to see truly creative works, then the creators need creative freedom. And these people, the people working on My Hero Academia, they only get creative freedom when they're working on the movies. So I'm always going to be for the movies. If this if this movie didn't exist, would season 5 look better? Probably, yeah. Norimitsu Suzuki might have animated another scene in season 5. Or the freelancers who wanted to work on this movie might have then wanted to work on the show. But even if Norimitsu Suzuki animated in the show, a second cut that is, it's not going to be this scene. And that's pretty much it. Hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did. Leave a comment down below telling how impressed you are by this Norimitsu Suzuki scene. If you did not like my video, then leave a dislike and tell me in the comment section on how I can improve. And yeah, if you want to see more of this stuff, subscribe. That's about it. Thanks for the views.